Now then, hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at through dovetails and in particular we're going to be looking at hand cutting these using tools that we have available in the shop with an aim to increase both accuracy and efficiency when cutting them. Now Rob Cosman has a method for cutting these absolutely perfectly but it is quite a slow process and it involves potentially specialist tools. Other woodworkers like Matt Esley have their method and stuff like that and Paul Sellers and this is a mixture of a few different methods. So if you want to learn how I do these now and I've got to say that there isn't a right or a wrong way to do this and my method is not foolproof or anything like that and I can't even claim that my method is my method. It's not. It's just little techniques that I've picked up along the way that lots of other people do. But if you want to see how I've put it all together, then stick around until after the intro. What we're going to go through today is some of the lesser talked about techniques for cutting through dovetails in larger projects like cabinet builds and stuff like that, where you're not cutting the, the joint in isolation where you can focus purely on getting the joint absolutely perfect but real world applications. So I've got three bits of wood here. We're going to pretend that these are three sides of a cabinet. It doesn't matter how big or small they are but these are just three scraps that I have. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay these out and cut them as though that's the cabinet base, that's the cabinet side and that's the cabinet top. Or whatever and there are a few ways that are not that often talked about for speeding things up making things more efficient and even when they are talked about they're very rarely shown so let's get started i'm going to start off by marking the shoulder lines now i've got two bits of wood here that are the same thickness and generally if you're doing through dovetails having wood the same thickness speeds things up a bit because you only need one marking gauge setting. This bit of wood is thicker however I'm going to just use the same marking gauge on this and we won't actually fit this to anything so we'll actually only be joining these two but this will be a useful part of the demonstration. So to start off with all I'm going to do is set my marking gauge now it's important that when you start all your wood squared off so here, I am literally just going to mark the lines all the way around this. And it is possible, and actually quite simple, to do this even if your wood isn't squared off at the ends. And all you do is use a square and a marking knife. So let's do it that way now. And just to make sure I've got the same measurement, all I want to do is bring my square down onto my marking gauge like that. Coming from one end, make a little nick. And I can square this around here. And I actually prefer the line that a marking knife gives because it's generally a deeper and sharper line than a marking gauge. And that makes it easier to get a chisel into. However, marking gauges are absolutely fine. So one of the things that's talked about a lot with um, dovetails is that a marking knife is much more precise than a pencil. And I agree completely with that when you're talking about shoulder lines. However, I disagree with it when it comes to actually cutting the pins and tails and stuff like that. And you'll see in a bit what I mean. Now this is certainly slower than using a marking gauge. 
but it is equally as accurate. Phone call. Sorry about that, that was the commander in chief on the phone there. Where was I? Right, yeah, uh, a marking gauge is certainly quicker than a marking knife, but I prefer the line that you get off a marking knife to what you get off a, a gauge. So at this point, there is no method for speeding this up at all. And I hate this part because when you're doing large cabinets, it just takes forever because you have to do each end of each piece and there's no getting around it. However, we're now going to start speeding things up. So I'll just put this away. So I'm going to get my two tails boards and register them on the bench like this, make sure they're even, and then just come in with a squeeze clamp just to hold them in position. And then I can just drop them straight into my vise like that. Make sure they're clamped up the same. reasonably vertical take the squeeze clamp off and what I'm going to do here I'm going to come in with a square and I'm going to mark out I just realized I've lost a lot of pencils I'm going to come in with a square and I'm going to mark out my half pins I'm not measuring this I'm just taking a guess of a, a random any sort of random small measurements fine I'm going to come in there, I'm going to come in about the same on the other side but do not have to be precise at all. Remember so these are going to be hand cut dovetails not machine cut dovetails so it's fine to have a little bit of variation. And I want two larger pins and a small pin so I will stick my ruler somewhere roughly in the middle like that, make a line there and make a line there and this is across the tops of both pieces so if you're making a cabinet this would represent the ends of two tail boards and once you've done this side you just literally turn it around and do the other two so I have a knife line all the way around I've now marked the tails along the top and all I'm going to do is use a dovetail marker that I made myself to draw the lines down and this is a 1 in 8 marker I prefer 1 in 8 it looks nice and neat and you can still tell it's a dovetail from a way off but without it being too excessive of course you can use a 1 in 7 or a 1 in 6 ratio and it won't make much difference so let me just show you what I've marked up here I have the knife line at the bottom. On the top across both boards I've marked a single square line where each tail is going to start and stop. N Notice that I haven't marked a gap here anywhere. Just a single straight line across. And then on the face of the front board only I've marked the dovetail angles and that's it. Now we're going to use a dovetail saw and a fret saw to cut these out. And I'm going to do both tail boards at once. So the reason why I'm doing both tail boards at once and why I'm marking out across both is because it's much easier to register your saw straight to a line across this wider distance. <laughs> For dovetail saws I prefer a coarser tooth count so I'm using a 14 tooth per inch saw here as opposed to my fine dovetail saw which has 20 tooth per inch. <laughs> So at this stage also, I'm not actually bothered if I'm following these angle lines or not, it makes no difference. Because these are obviously going to be traced onto the pins board. And it also doesn't matter which side of this line I'm on either, so just cut it however you're comfortable. <laughs> So now all we're going to do is place the dovetail saw straight back in that original curve with no real downwards pressure because if you put downwards pressure on this it will want to slip into that curve and 
tilt the blade over. So no real downwards pressure to start with. And from that single curve, we're going to establish a new dovetail angle. And then take your fret saw, straight down in there. And the amount of, we want to be getting rid of the vast majority of the waste here, so we want to be really close to the line. Any fret saw or coping saw would work absolutely fine here. And I'm only doing such small cuts because it allows me to keep control really close to the line. And then we're simply going to put our squeeze clamp back on, like that. And then we can do the shoulder lines on the half pins. Now I've got to say that these two boards aren't precisely the same width which is why that half pin didn't come off quite as easily. Right, so we've now got two tails boards. This one isn't actually going to get used anymore, we're not going to be joining it. So let's concentrate on sorting this one out. Now obviously we have marked out the board and we've gang cut it with the other board using the absolute minimum markings, just marking one face of one board and the top of both boards and that's it. And now Hopefully, you can see we're quite close to the lines. I've actually left a little bit much here. Um, you can get a lot closer than that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do two passes on the waist from each side and that's it. So the amount of waste that you want to be clearing with each pass is somewhere between half a millimetre and a millimetre as you get close to your line. And it doesn't matter if these are really heavily undercut or, or not, it's, you're not going all the way through so it doesn't really matter that much. And after you've chiselled back to your line, oftentimes there'll be some waste in the corners from where maybe you didn't go down far enough with the saw or from where you didn't chisel right into the corners depending on the width of your chisel so just get this waste out as best you can obviously making sure that you keep that knife line established so I'm just going to go in between these now and just clean out all the fluffy bits Once you get past gang cutting the tails, it is then back to doing it the slow way. Unfortunately. Right, so now I've got the little bits of waste on the shoulders to take care of. 
So all I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to come up and I'm going to slide my the tip of my chisel into that shoulder line and I'm just going to separate those fibres on the edge there. That's it. I'm then going to come round and slide the chisel up into this shoulder line. Only a couple of millimetres in though. And then I'm going to just push forwards like that. Making sure that I don't cut under the shoulder line that I just cut. It might take a couple of passes. There you go. Now I can come across a couple of millimetres at a time. There we go. Now, it doesn't matter what this surface looks like. What matters is that it's all underneath this shoulder line and this shoulder line. But that those shoulder lines haven't been taken down anywhere. If that makes sense. So you still have perfect shoulder lines. And I put it on an angle like this because when I come to pair this way into the wood, it just makes it easier because I'm obviously stooped over the wood. So now we need to transfer these tails onto our pins board. And there's a really easy way of doing this. And that's to use one of these, a dovetail marking board. So all it is, is a board at 90 degrees and it's got a lip on each side. So if I put this in here like this, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this face up with the end of the board. Close my vise on it. I'm then going to put my tails board on here. And I'm going to use a hole fast to hold it down. Now, I'm going to use a pencil to mark out to start with on the outer, on the Outer tails. Then, because I can't physically get a pencil in between these single curves, I'm going to use a marking knife. I'm just going to slide it in there gently, making sure that I'm registered against that tail wall. Do a few strokes. Now I don't really like to use marking knives for this because you're effectively putting a marking knife against your tail wall and making a line there. That line is then on the outside of this tail wall. So if you cut using that marking line as, a, as your, uh, if you use it as a knife wall, then it's on the outside and you're going to be leaving extra space where you don't need it. Whereas with a pencil, you just mark the pencil line and then when you cut, you leave the pencil line where it is in the wood. So, when it comes to doing this, I use the marking knife. To mark the end of the board but then I go over it with a pencil. So I just put a pencil in the curve like that. I'm 
and I make the pencil line nice and thick so it spills out over the tops of the knife line. In fact, you don't actually need to use a ruler because the pencil just follows the knife line. So these pins are the bits that I'm going to be keeping and by putting the pencil line there, I can cut to one side of the pencil line, leaving the pencil line in situ and it'll ensure that these are nice and tight joints. So I will just mark off my worst. Hopefully you can see that. And then it is literally a case. Oh, it is literally a case of squaring these lines down. So position your pencil first. Slide your ruler up to it. And on this, I am actually going to mark both sides of the board, just in case I cut off line with a saw cut, and then that way. I have a reference on both sides to pair to, so I know that I can pair it square if needs be. However, the aim of this is to get it right off the saw. There we go. So now it's just a case of cutting these out, staying on the worst side of the line. So I'm a little bit away from the line here, so rather than continue that cut, I'm going to pull out of the curve, just come up and try and re-establish it up here, a completely new separate curve. And it's easiest to do that with small little cuts. And then just onto chiselling again. So anywhere where there's a fair bit of waste, I'll do it in two passes. Everywhere else, I'll do it in one. So when you're chiselling waste out between the pins, you want to be using as wide a chisel as possible, but it still needs to be able to fit in the gap between the back of the pins, so on the fat side. And when you're chiselling down from the front face, Give it a couple of taps just to register it in the line and then tilt it over and try and follow the angle of the pin and that will reduce the amount of work you have by quite a significant amount and again you want to be aiming for at least a 90 degree cut if not slightly undercut so that none of that waste interferes right so we're now in this position here i need to clean up the bottoms of these and we're actually not far off on the backs. Might need to clean this one up. Yeah. So we'll start off on the front. And all I'm gonna do is firstly clean out those corners. And then just get rid of any obvious bits that are going to cause issues and these chisels could do with a sharpen to be honest
So this is just a case of cleaning the waste out as best you can. And if any of the walls or the pins need pairing, here is where you would do it. Right, so that's the joint together. And you can never tell what a joint's really going to look like when you just pour it together. It needs planing down. So, let's do that. When I begin planing, I'm concentrating on just taking down the ends of the pins until they're flush with the board. But after that, I need to do full length passes along the entire face of the board so that I can remove my marking lines and make sure that the board isn't tapered. Of course, you don't have to do that part if you want to keep the marking knife lines. And it's just rinse and repeat for the other board. So here's the finished joint. You can see that these have all closed up perfectly. I've got a very slight gap in this one here, but that's not to worry about. By the time you apply finish to that, it'll be absolutely fine. And then on the opposite side here, you've got nice thin pins there. It's a very handsome joint and it's not difficult to cut following the method in this video. Right, so I hope you learnt something from that and enjoyed the video. Again, let's take a closer look at these dovetails. If I just move that light. So, they've got nice closed shoulder lines. This tail right here has a very slight gap in it. These are all absolutely spot on. On that pin there that has that gap it's also got a gap along the top and i suspect that that occurred when i paired this outer pin i might have paired it a little bit too much but other than that nice clean joint actually really easy to cut uh, and much quicker to mark out particularly when you take into consideration that when i cut these tails i would have effectively been doing two tail boards at once then you'd flip it around and do the other two and the only thing that actually really takes time is putting the shoulder marking knife lines in on all of the boards after that it's just a case of on the front of your face board so on the front face of your face board rather you mark out your dovetail angles and across both of them you mark a single line and use that single line to create a single saw curve to cut all the tails and then the pins are basically done as normal apart from the marking out. So if I was cutting these pins wider and I could get a pencil in between these tails, I wouldn't have used the marking knife at all because I think using the pencil is much, much more accurate because you can cut to one side of the pencil line and leave it in its entirety and it also leaves you room for corrections with a chisel if you need it. Whereas if you use a knife line, the tendency is just to put your saw into that knife line and then you're cutting outside of the joint rather than cutting where the joint actually needs to be. As I said in the intro, Rob Cosman has a method where he offsets the pins and tails boards and he uses a thicker marking knife with, I think it's like a sawtooth that's the same, the same thickness blade as the curve of your dovetail saw and you offset it by that much, you create your knife line and you put your saw straight into that knife line but because it's been offset, it's actually in the right place. However, that means investing in a sawtooth marking knife and it also means faffing about offsetting the boards whereas doing it this way dead easy straightforward with tools you've got in the shop anyway i hope you enjoyed that if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time